this could be a federal issue. Did he didn't send it? No. But the only one video. Come. Okay, they have video of it. But no one's looked at the video. So we got the box. Where's it at? Hey, I'm Alex Stone. This is Body Cam by Ride Along. Our guest today, Damian Bunting. You know him as The Street G in Portland, <laughs> Oregon. I just made that up, but I love it. I love it. Now, Damian brought a video to us. I have not seen it. He has. Why don't you give us a little description and we'll watch it. This is GBRS at their headquarters in Virginia. They have what they are assuming is an employee that potentially might have stolen a very uh, regulated okay. part. Let's so no big that. deal, potential theft. This is a okay, this okay. is a BCM lower, so that's a registered part. For the folks out there, what is a BCM lower, Damian? Uh, BCM lower is the um, the registered part of the AR-15. Mm -hmm. um, this is the the only I would assume serialized uh, part. So this is a firearms. Okay, this is a firearms. Th that, that heightens the call. He didn't send it. No, it's still, it's still outstanding. Like the. Shipment still hasn't been scanned in. Okay. So this is what seems to be a supervisor in this situation. He's informing the law enforcement Love officers it. that the package was taken off property. They have video of the employee leaving with the package and returning without the package. However, there's no shipping number, no tracking number. There's nothing that shows that it was scanned in. So at this point, the item is now missing. So he's reporting a theft. Reporting a theft, but he hasn't even asked the employee what happened to it. I really have no idea. So it's just a BCM lower? Just a BCM lower. Very serious. This could be a federal issue. If it were to be found that he, you know, gave that to someone without having them go through the proper channels, if he were to have sold that, I mean, we're talking federal charges. Yeah. This is a major issue. Th that's a big deal. And what's his description? He said taller black male. Six two black male, all right, 230 pounds. Oh, so how do I, the owners want to address this with him first? Is that do I need? Is there anything we do to, to slow roll this or? So the no one in the company has actually spoken to the employee. No one in the company has actually yeah. spoken to the employee. And I, I want to give GBRS as a, as a company a little bit of credit. It seems as though they have. It's a big deal. That they have said we want to address this with the employee first. That should have been done before you called the police. When law enforcement gives a lawful order, you have to comply with that order or you're actually in violation of of some type of code or some type of law. You can't stop the wills of justice. Yeah, you, you're not gonna tell them, hey, we're missing a uh, serialized registered firearm, uh, but we don't want you to do anything about hey, it. Hey, just give us a second. <laughs> yeah. Because they're thinking, hey, you had all the seconds before we got here. Yeah, 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 exactly. It gets better. What we would do, so let, let me game plan with him because I want to make sure he's he's online with everything. I don't want to put the I don't want to put the owners in in the pitfall, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. As an owner, you have a federal firearms license. Right. You're an, you're an FFL registered FFL dealer. If it goes missing, that can reflect poorly upon them. They don't want ATF involved. They want to get this resolved in a way. And it's hot right now in terms of HOT. Of, it's HOT yeah. out there, son. Yeah. yeah, you can't be you can't be messing around with stuff like that. So he took off with it. He returned without it. Mm -hmm. But the only they have video. Okay, they have video of it. Okay. They don't know if they want to push charges yet, but they have video of it, but no one's looked at the video. It seems as though this officer might be in field training. And so they're giving him the opportunity, allegedly, oh. they're giving him the opportunity yeah. to work through what the potential charges hey, are. Hey, what do we have here? Exactly. Tell us what you are observing yet. Yeah, totally. gonna see. You're, I think you're totally right. Plus, his uniform looks very crisp. Very clean. So it's felony, so the one of his charges. Also, it's a felony because it's a firearm. Yeah, he's working through the elements of a crime. Are they, are uh, DJ and Cole upstairs right now? So DJ and Cole are the two forward-facing yeah. members we of GBRS. They yeah. They are extremely famous. So Former right team here, guys. the yeah. officer is projecting that he already knows where he's at and who he's dealing with. And I think that that plays into what happens next. Yeah, unfortunately, that it does. Yeah. So this okay. is showing after he's been arrested in this video. This is the employee. Ooh, saved by the freaking mailman. Yeah. Hell yeah, appreciate you, sir. Man, I, uh, thank you for being cool with me. This is approximately three hours yeah, after being arrested. Yeah, and like I said, if that, if that happened and you were already in custody, then like, you would have just been unarrested. So the cops show up, they take a report of a stolen firearm, they don't review any of the footage, they go in the, they, before, they don't interview him on site, they arrest him. Take him downtown. Take him in downtown, they shackle his hands and his feet. And his feet. Right, like they're transporting a prisoner, like a prisoner transport. And apparently this this in, employee is in charge of shipping and receiving. That's 
Okay. Accounts receivable yeah. and shipping. And they take him downtown for three, four hours. During that time, someone back at the warehouse finds the lower receiver. In the bag, in the box, completely sealed, like it's going to be delivered. Never been opened. Never been opened. What are your procedures for keeping things like that safe? Absolutely. There should be a cage system. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but whatever. I mean, I hate to say it, but the fact that he's black too. Optics. I mean, that's, well, come on now. So we got the box. Where's it at? So he's having a, a secondary employee leave the office so that he can speak with the, the officers yeah. that have come back. Just shut the door. So 10 minutes after you guys left. This showed up. This showed up? What does that mean? The cops should be like, okay, exactly where did you find it? Did you document it? Did you take a photograph of it in place? He's at, they're asking no questions. They, if they're not going to conduct an investigation prior to arrest, if you make a false arrest, you should conduct a extremely good investigation. On the back end. After you release the individual. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what y'all's policy on like THC is here and stuff. He had a weed pen on him. So they're, they're essentially trying to convince the, the this company to fire the guy. Yeah. They're saying they found a weed pen. Did He said, I wanted to charge him. Did they test the weed pen? Yeah. Did it come back with THC? They did not. It doesn't seem like they did because he's saying that the supervisor did not allow that charge to go through. I'm not sure what the um, the state statute is in terms of THC for Virginia. Yeah. And there's been some discussion from the other side of this situation that that's a CBD pen. Um, Wonderful. Correct serial, everything. Mm. Okay. Again, he's taking his word that the serial number matches the missing serial number they reported. Did they give an original serial number at the time of the report? Did he match it to that firearm? Did he actually check and inspect the firearm and take a photograph for his report that the serial number that was reported missing is the serial number of the gun that was supposedly found? Absolutely. They don't know. He's taking this guy's word for it. How much training do officers go through in terms of not allowing someone's celebrity or fame to influence how you do your job. You're talking a lot about protocol and things that should be done in terms of investigation, but yeah. do they talk about this with, with officers? So during boards, you're always asked those favoritism questions and being impartial, okay. right? Because you're the per you have to be impartial. You're just there to gather facts. You can't let someone's personality sway you okay. in an investigation. And you wanna show that you're there you're conducting an investigation the same way every time, even when you do a crime scene. It has to be uniform and universal. Right. If it's not uniform and universal, it's not a standard. That is a great point. Gosh. Can you show me to his office? He wants me to get his car keys. All his stuff's right there. His car keys are right there. They've already got his stuff boxed up. He has a energy drink in the fridge. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Wow. So, hey. We're not always right. I'm not always right. Damian Bunting's not always right. You know, as a law enforcement officer, people would take my reports and chew them up all the time. Yep. And this is what a defense attorney is going to do to these police officers. And so this is what we're gonna do. This is what the body cam's for, is to show transparency. And 100%, I think it's good for, for officers who might watch this, for security guards, for, for anyone, yeah. employers. Because when you're sitting in front of a jury, those are the people that are determining your fate. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, good words. Thanks for watching the body cam, like and subscribe. Take care. Check us out.